Live and local with coverage you can count on. This is WNEM TV 5 News at 10. Tornado ravaged communities in mid Michigan, beginning the painful process of cleaning up after the devastating storm, but getting some much needed help along the way. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Jamie Sherrod. Trees toppled, buildings destroyed, and debris scattered across many communities. Now residents are learning how extensive the damage is and what's next in the process of cleaning it up. TV5's Jonathan Jackson has more. In an effort to recover from the damage caused by two tornadoes that touched down in Shiawassee County, the community came together at Durand High School, where emergency management and county officials informed the public on the damage that had been done and how to begin the recovery process. It's a whole lot easier to bring them here, be able to ask their questions, get their questions answered, uh, and also uh, get information that they need. Director of Emergency Management for Shiawassee County, Trin Atkins, says the meeting allows emergency responders to provide residents with the resources they need, such as information on insurance, consumer safety, and temporary housing, and even featured government officials who are there to address recovery efforts as well. We've seen tremendous uh, facilitation and coordination uh, of different resources, and that continues today with this forum. However, volunteers are still needed to keep the recovery process going, which is why people are being asked to sign up if they can. Something local leaders such as Sheriff Brian Begol says is encouraging to see and hopes inspires others to do so. Because I thought we had our nonprofits out working and, and come to find out it was friends, neighbors, church groups out uh, cleaning. So uh, they actually tackled a lot of that uh, work. Still a lot more to do, but uh, it, it's amazing, uh, you know, that the, the way uh, it's all come together, the people, neighbors and friends helping. In Durand, Jonathan Jackson, WNEM TV 5. All right, thanks, Jonathan. And it's a sure sign of spring in mid-Michigan. High river levels and roadways close due to flooding throughout downtown Midland. Right now, Poseville Road is closed between Ashby and Ellsworth, among many others throughout the county because of the flooding. Much of the water coming off the Titabawassee River, less than a foot below flood stage at the moment. But the river is slowly receding and should continue that trend for the next few days. You can find a more complete list of road closures in Midland County by heading to our website, WNEM.com. A flurry or two over a cloudy mid-Michigan as we take this live look over Flint and Saginaw. But as flood concerns continue, an upcoming stretch of dry weather certainly is welcome. Meteorologist John Gross is in the First One Five Weather Center keeping an eye on our forecast. Hi, John. Yeah, hey, Jamie. We're uh, dealing with the nice conditions going forward throughout the rest of this evening into the overnight period. Just a few flurries here from time to time. But it was a pretty nice St. Patrick's Day. We got some pretty good photos in. This was sent in from Matt. Check out the beach beautiful sunset that we saw here. Thank you so much for sending that in, Matt. But we are also dealing with the flood alert still, like we were just talking about along the Tibawasi River. And we also still do have the Saginaw and the Rifle River under a flood warning that's going to go into effect until Tuesday. Your temperatures out the door this evening have us mainly into the lower 30s, starting to peak into the upper 20s, 31 in Saginaw, 30 in Flint, and we're at 28 degrees already in Clare. Your first Warren 5 Sky Tracker shows those flurries continuing to move throughout mid-Michigan. The low pressure system that did bring those is skirting off towards the east throughout Ohio this evening, and we're going to continue to see a diminish in those flurries throughout the overnight period. So here it is for your bus stop forecast tomorrow. Heading back to school, partly cloudy skies to start off. Temperatures in the 20s, and we're going to watch out for a slight rain or snow shower into the afternoon. Temperatures getting back into the upper 30s. We're going to break down your entire week ahead. That's all coming up in just a little bit. Michigan St. Patrick's Day tradition, the 65th annual parade in Bay City. The Irish festivities featuring marching bands, floats, and a whole lot of green, bringing out thousands of families and spectators. TV Vibes Cody Koshinsky was there and has some of the highlights tonight. The sound of bagpipes, the Irish flags, and a whole lot of green filled the streets of downtown Bay City for the 65th time. But for some, like Carleton High School foreign exchange student Luke Pat, this is her very first time celebrating St. Patrick's Day at all. Oh, it looks amazing because like this is my first time. So yeah, it, like I, I see that like everyone seemed to be fun. Her favorite part of the parade was seeing everyone dressed up in funny costumes and running the races beforehand, even in the cold, which is something she's never seen before in her home country of Thailand. I think it's 
it's cool because like you can dress like as crazy as you want or something like that. And I think you guys have fun too, right? It's also a first time experience for Irish citizen Pegney. She's seen a lot of authentic St. Patrick's Day celebrations, but says she's impressed with how Bay City spends the holiday. But I, and I did the, five, the 5K walk this morning, so I really am impressed with the organization. I said, well done, Bay City, I'm proud of you. My new, my, my new adopted city. Because of how amazing the turnout was today, Pegney says she didn't feel like she was missing anything back home. I think it's wonderful how you actually celebrate everybody wearing green. And like a lot of you are not even Irish connected, but everybody wants to be connected to Ireland on St. Patrick's Day. And lastly, in her first language to everyone in Min, Michigan. I would say Banati in the Philoparic, which means happy, happy St. Patrick's Day. In Bay City, Cody Kaczynski, WNEM TV5. Well, the Bay City St. Patrick's Day festivities started bright and early for many runners and walkers. Thousands taking part in the 8K run and 5K walk down Center Avenue. It's considered the largest running event in the Great Lakes Bay region. TV5's own James Felton was one of the many to cross the finish line in today's race. And we've compiled dozens of your pictures from today's parade. You'll find them all in a slideshow on our website, WNEM.com. Well, March Madness is in full swing as college basketball fans gear up for the highly anticipated NCAA tournament. The brackets are now set after a tense matchup between bitter rivals Michigan and Michigan State. With the Big Ten champion now crowned, where do Michigan and Michigan State fall with the rest of the teams across the nation? Let's go now to sports extras Jason Fielder for a closer look. Jason? Hi, Jamie. So even though Michigan State beat the Wolverines for the third time this season and the Spartans are now the Big Ten tournament and regular season champions, both teams are on equal footing for the NCAA tournament. They are both two seeds, which means they are seen as equals in the eyes of the selection committee. And get this, MSU actually has a harder draw because they've got the number one overall seed in their region. And that's the Duke Blue Devils, a team that Tom Izzo's rarely beat in his time at MSU. Both U of M and MSU will play in Des Moines, Iowa this weekend, so that'll be pretty cool to have fans from both teams in the arena. Michigan will open the first round against Montana, and MSU will square off against Bradley. I'll have a closer look at those matchups and the pathway to the Final Four for the Wolverines and Spartans. That'll be coming up ahead in sports. Also coming up, I will tell you which teams have the best odds of winning the national championship. That's something that could help you a little bit when you're filling out your brackets, if that's something that you haven't done yet. I mean, the brackets just came out a couple hours ago, so I doubt you filled yours out, right, Jamie? Yeah, I have no idea how to do those, so you're going to have to show me all about that, Jason. Well, an Iowa trooper acted on a gut feeling, and it may have prevented an attack. Still ahead where the suspect was heading and what sparked alarm for the trooper. And a local bank is warning customers after several fall victim to skimmers targeting ATMs and gas pumps. Remember, for breaking news and weather any hour of the day, just like us on Facebook. 